I adore Internet. I think most people like this guy, though. He's a fun plan general, while offering some really solid strategy behind his use. He's not my favorite plant ever, but he's certainly up there, and I adore using Infinite in most mods I play. And even vanilla, which is often a rarity. Seriously, most of my favorite plants just suck in vanilla. It's very sad. I think Infinite, though, has been simplified a lot over the years. I think people mostly see him as a plant food sink, which is honestly fair. This plant food is very effective, but it overlooks Infinite himself, who, honestly, is also fantastic, and as far as I'm concerned, is a very well-designed plant. And we need more of these. Especially by wall plant standards, Infinite is utterly brilliant in so many ways, and solves so many core issues that wall plants have, while also having some very pwned utility, some very unique abilities, and just, oh god. Uh, okay, so I'm enough gushing. Wall plants and PZ2 do generally suck, and I think Infinite manages to help solve a problem somewhat. So, let's get into Infinite proper. He absolutely needs an explanation. He doesn't quite work how you think. Infinite is a holographic walnut, with a small projector at its base. Okay, I need to cover PZ lore briefly because this bothers me. So, does Infinite actually exist? No, seriously. Which part of Infinite is the plant? Is it the hologram of the projector itself? Because the grades seem to imply the hologram itself is sentient, as he seems to be in pain when he is being eaten. In addition, his almanac entry seems to imply he's seeing out of a white eye to me, as the projector doesn't have eyes at all. However, the projector itself has leaves around it, a common trademark of plants, but also if we assume the hologram is sentient alone, then we have to deal with a fact that makes literally no sense. Heck, it makes no sense anyways! Holograms aren't edible! The entire point is that they are made exclusively, or at least mostly, of light. What on earth is it doing? Anyways, the, the design is co cool. I, I, I do like their design. The, the, the eyes are pretty. Moving on. Infinite is a wall plant, meaning that I can block off zombies for some time. Just some, not for a very long time, as it has the lowest HP of any wall, at 2k in vanilla. For context, that's half of walnut HP. This guy ain't lasting long, but that's fine. After some time of not being eaten, uh, he'll revive at full HP assuming his projector is still intact, which is quite helpful. He'll also do this if he isn't being eaten and has been damaged, by the way. He also doesn't conventionally heal, he'll just have HP to its maximum after some amount of time. Pretty helpful to know, as it helps to keep his HP topped off. It's also a weird trait that I didn't know he had until I was actually looking into Infinite, so there you go, that's fun. Otherwise, his plant food is very potent. It'll create a shield across all five lanes, which can take an absurd amount of punishment in vanilla. Not only that, but it can solve all zombie types bar very few, including gargs decently well and ranged zombies, and disable zombies like fishermen from getting past and dragging plants behind. It's a very strong plant food, and he may bring infinite solely for it, which isn't honestly a super terrible plan. Still not the brightest, unless you're really desperate for anything against Big Way Beach, which, frankly, isn't most unusual circumstance. Either way, his plan food is super interesting, as it calls a lot of zombies to be stopped which normally wouldn't be. It's the only way to see the eating animation of a ton of zombies, such as Octos or Wizards. It's certainly not impenetrable, though, and so the player needs to show some caution, Though, don't worry about it too much. It won't die easy. Anyways, now let's cover what makes these traits, and if it as a whole, a good plant. Just how do these traits intersect? Infinite is used very differently from other wall plants, mostly because its traits are very unique to itself. At a low sun cost, it can't be spammed anywhere. And it should be as unlike most plants, it doesn't die painfully easily. Every infinite you plant will last the rest of the game, assuming nothing destroys the projector, and as a result, you should be planting tons and tons of it. Its low health is still high enough that two infinites can permanently stall a single zombie, and this gives a good benchmark for its effectiveness. Its recharge is also far from bad in vanilla, so it's not that difficult to get a ton of infinites out, and a field of infinite can really support any defense and creating a defense that can split zombies up naturally can be effective sometimes. 
leftovers isn't their most crucial element of abilities. Still, it helps stall zombies and can help make good value of spaces you aren't using. In this regard, it can be considered similar to plants like spikeweed. It's a plant that doesn't necessarily define a strategy, but can work well for the plants and works energetically to provide some valuable support. It's also just generally interesting to work with, though its weaknesses are still significant. As in a similar regard to spikeweed, it has significant weaknesses you have to keep in mind. I failed to mention this earlier, but projectors can be destroyed separate of a plant, and most ways zombies kill plants that aren't eating them will destroy projectors. This also include barrels and piano, both of which can destroy infinites forever. However, its low cost makes this not a huge concern. After all, in vanilla, it's only 75 cents to place, and in most mods it won't cost a lot more. The main counter would really be football mats, as these will actively use the infinite field against you. Ironically, in the same world as this unlocked in. Go figure. However, its matchups are generally great, Outside of Big Way Beach, which counts as super hard in its normal use, it can offer great support against a lot of zombies, especially tanky zombies, and can work wonders when used to plants that can help clear it out well. Zombies like Pharaohs don't exactly have great responses to Infinite, which can prove incredibly valuable as a reliable answer to more heavy zombies that are alone. This also synergizes with its plant food effect quite well. As you'd want to place a thing in the front, using its plant food can help manage everything simultaneously which is obviously important. In addition, its plant food can help a lot against most targets that would naturally counter it, while disabling most threats. Seriously, the plant food is crucial in vanilla, synergizes pretty well in himself, and has become famous in its own right. It also feels important to bring up Big Way Peach here, and a certain fishy boy. Yes, Infinite can counter Fishman very effectively, with his plant food. Fisherman's pucks will bounce straight off the shield, and this makes Infinite really the only counter to the worst Big Way Peach zombie with Dr. Haters, and as a result, invaluable. Despite the world itself trying to counter it in every possible manner, Infinite is still very valuable. How fitting then, as frankly, this is something Infinite already did. It's been doing it since the day it started. Infinite does what no other wall could do. It pushes past its counters and weaknesses to become a valuable plant. In Plants vs Zombies 1, wall plants were fairly valuable. Plants vs Zombies 1 didn't have many zombies that really could answer walls, and those that did were fairly rare, unreliable, or both. And even more zombies got specifically countered by walls, or just on it. In addition to Endless making Pumpkin insanely valuable in its own. Seriously, very few zombies can actively remove walls effectively, which makes walls very effective in that game. However, in the sequel, this isn't the case at all. Most worlds have SOME zombie that can break down walls and do so quickly. Whether it's by sheeping, burning, shoveling, or otherwise, every world will break walls down in their own way, and this is only the start of their problems. As the game got harder and choices expanded, walls stopped being useful, because walls aren't inherently useful. If you recall from my intensive care video, which will be linked below, I covered a concept called offensive momentum. Basically, that killing zombies quickly and effectively makes the next wave easier to deal with, and failing to do so makes the situation a lot more difficult. One thing that I didn't mention though, is this isn't necessarily always the case, mostly because killing zombies inherently tends to spawn the next zombies, which is one of the big things that stalls can help with, in addition to just pushing zombies away from your front line or running their approach. However, walls tend to be outclassed by more conventional stallers, as they are effective against groups. Most walls die violently to groups, and it can be a big issue, especially considering that groups are more than likely the main problem you want solving. It's fairly rare for singular zombies to be much of a concern. This is before you get into their unreliability, as so many zombies will outright remove them. It doesn't help that a solo can work fine alone, meanwhile walls tend to need a lot more damage to get zombies off them. The main issue this causes is that walls die too hard to what they can't counter and don't do enough to stop what they can counter. This results in their biggest flaw. Walls simply aren't useful in most cases. Thankfully, though, Infinite solves this problem. Just not quite in a way you'd immediately expect. After all, you'd assume the way to fix walls would be to negate these weaknesses, but I actually disagree entirely. Think about it. Walls are weak because they get countered, sure, but they also don't counter things too effectively. So, when fixing and improving walls, 
you don't introduce ways to counter insta killers first. You instead make the wall better against the enemies it can counter. An infinite, as a plant, is very effective against what it can counter. It doesn't lose interactions ever against zombies it can deal with, as it will simply revive later, which alone is a huge deal. It also doesn't suffer from having a weak plant food effect, unlike every other wall in the game, which is a huge plus in a game where most levels have a ton of it given to the player. Otherwise, Infinite also just doesn't lose too much from a failed encounter. If it dies to Explorer, it doesn't matter a whole lot. You still only lose 75 sun worth of plant, which is absolutely nothing if you know how to play the game effectively. It's a really good compromise too, as the amount of health it has is just enough for plants like Fume to be able to take out a vast majority of threats, and its ability to heal means it's going to be in a really good space afterwards. This is also totally ignoring stacking, too. Usually more than one wall per lane is extremely wasteful. However, you can absolutely get infinite everywhere, as each infinite will make the field permanently that much harder to navigate, and more access to wall spam, a strat where you just bring 10,000 walls and install everything to death, is always a good thing, at least to me, because wall spam is just fun. In this regard, infinite rises up and beyond what a normal plant would do, as unlike other walls, it actually deals with some of the weaknesses it has in a unique and important way, which not a whole lot of plants in general can actually say. It approaches the issue of walls being more questionable in PC2 and finds a solution, and this is before I cover the fact its plant food is as powerful as it is. Its plant food takes the opposite approach, as instead of being a good wall against things that are weak to them, it's a wall that's resistant to the vast majority of zombies that counter walls. And this is an insanely important ability that no other wall has at all been able to tap into, and it is glorious. It also serves as the single best way to tank Gargantua smashes, which is obviously an important trait. Beyond this, it has an absurd amount of help, and the fact it can cover all five lanes is super important. It also works as the best counter for zombies like Explorer and Torchlight, as they will stop and eat the barrier as opposed to anything else they simply burn, totally shutting them down. It's a very big and very important fact to keep in mind when working with Infinite, and it's just general power. Seriously, if other walls plant food effects rendered them immune or resistant to instant kills this way, so many plants would be much more interesting and much more effective, and it's a shame that only Infinite does this. However, other walls do similar things. I feel the need to bring these up now, as I may not have a better chance in the future, so yeah, off I go! Oh, also Explorer is legally not a wall. Ha. The most unique wall in this game is probably Chardguard, mostly because it's barely a wall. It knocks zombies back three times, in an area of effect in front of itself. It's a very strong plant and shouldn't be taken lightly. It's arguably the best wall plant vanilla, mostly because it handles hordes extremely well, and can deal with gargantuas, a very large rarity, though it's definitely more like an instant plant than a wall to me. Still, a pretty neat plant. Primal Walnut comes to mind, too. It's another wall that can deal with Gantuas, but is a lot less interesting. Still, it's a very simple wall and is quite effective for that alone, though I personally don't care a lot for it. It's just not very interesting to use, and its immunity to Garg Smashes tends to be secondary to its ability, and that doesn't make it very appealing to me in the gameplay sense. I mostly bring this up as it's a very much a wall you could use, and fits into Jurassic Marsh's blend of zombie spam beings and everywhere quite well. Mercadamia is a plant I quite like overall, at least on paper. It's a wall with proper regenerating health, unlike Infinite, while having a unique interaction with zombies, turning their damage against them. This is definitely less unique in vanilla because, well, very few zombies actually eat quickly, but they certainly have an interesting ability against those that do, and it can pose an interesting counter to a lot of PZ2 zombies, while also encouraging a player to use the Moonflowers in more interesting circumstances. Gumnut is busted, but honestly a plant I find pretty interesting, if you ignore the fact that its stats are dumb. It's an AoE wall that uses the HP of zombies it catches for their HP. It's a great counter to hordes, and I do really appreciate a wall that can handle them well. Shame about its stats, though, as it certainly sucks the fun out of a plan for me, 
but I've never enjoyed overpowered plants all too much, so I suppose that's not too surprising. There is one other wall I'd like to talk about here, but I'm saving him for later. After all, to not get tangled up in the details, you might be seeing a lot of him in the near future. Walls overall in Plants vs Zombies 2 are kinda weak, but it's nice to see so many plants that try to improve on the inherent formula. I just personally believe Infinite did it the best, and has become one of my favourite plants for that reason. It's such a unique plant, and I'm glad you all voted for it. The other option in that poll was Tile Turner, but don't worry, I'll talk about them later for sure. It certainly sucks that walls were hit so hard, but honestly, it's a small price to pay overall. After all, this allowed a lot more zombie variety. Zombies like Explorer, Excavator and Football Mech are zombies that exist, and I do really like them despite them countering walls in this way. This is just a consequence of improving the rest of the game as far as I'm concerned, but having a few plans like Infinite which can get around this issue regardless is very pleasant. Anyway, subscribe, it, it helps a ton. When I make the next one of these, you'll be the first to hear about it, which is obviously in your best interest as you clearly love this video. There's also the Discord, but you know, the generic YouTube stuff, be generic. Otherwise, there's some creeps, and have a good one.